Um, shall we get started then? I don't know who else is joining. Tim, are you the expert on thoracic spine? Well, um, <laughs> I could take everyone through the entire foam roller series, but I wanted to start with something that while I was doing my research on um, bone density, osteoporosis, which kind of leads me to a question about the roller with somebody, working with somebody that has uh, osteoporosis. Yes. I, I got the impression that if it was severe, they probably shouldn't, we probably shouldn't use the roller with them. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So we, I just taught this this week in uh, the rehab course. Again, osteoporosis. Yeah. So the yeah. roller, I think, is pretty well contraindicated for somebody with osteoporosis, especially the thoracic mobilization. So the uh, suggestions, um, ideas, for, but thoracic extension is a really great thing for somebody with osteoporosis. Right. So the suggestions and recommendations that I gave them there was finding like using an arc, which has a smoother surface. That, um, and it has a longer curve, so there's not pressure on a particular vertebra. Someone suggested using the little red ball. I suggested using the big ball, big blue balls, or the big dip balls for extension. And that, the red ball was what I had seen Sherry Betts do, and so I was going to have us open up with the red ball. If you go, <laughs> so if you've got a red ball. Go ahead and place it where you would normally place the roller at the tips of the shoulder blades and then carefully come down over it. Now, of course, if, uh, yeah, so interlace your fingers behind your and bring them to the back of your neck as we normally would for upper ab curls, maybe a little higher. The purpose of having them here is simply to support your head. So we don't want your head to be unsupported. And then from here, just keep your hips down. Go ahead and extend over. Bring your, keep your uh, elbows wide and just let yourself come down, making sure that you, you're finding length in that neck. So not just dropping the neck, but pulling slightly up at the occiput to get that length in the neck. And just enjoy being over the ball. It's a little softer than the roller doesn't quite give you the same kind of feedback as far as you can't really wrap your shoulder blades very easily, I don't think. But it's nice and soft. And that's why I like it. So just going over it a few times, taking a couple of breaths. And then particularly as we age, a lot of us start to get this thing they call the dowager's hump, which is right at the base between the the uh, top of the thoracic and the cervical spine. So you can roll forward. Everybody just pull yourself forward. Try not to pull your clothes with you like I do. And keep supporting your head and neck and let the ball rest below, just below your neck and between your shoulder blades. And just open up here, that upper quadrant, which for me, uh, that dowager, dowager hump thing frightens me, so I don't want to get that. And then just breathe. And then the next thing isn't really thoracic, but it's kind of a nice uh, extension to this, and that's to let the ball come up onto your neck, and it's resting just at the base of your occiput. You can take your you can take your hands out because your head is supported, but if you can find that spot where you can just get that length in your neck and you don't have to keep your hands behind your head without strangling yourself with your t-shirt because it keeps coming with me. And that's it. That's my, my, my opener. And of course, you can go, you know, obviously, you can luxuriate as Zaina is doing <laughs> over the ball. <laughs> and I can actually reach my head to the floor here. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> but I've been doing this more just because it's not so hard. Not as hard as the, the roller. 
Hello, oh, ladies. Everybody. You just missed my relaxing opening. <laughs> yes, maybe you should show them really quick one more time. Okay, so really quick, uh, Frida and Teresa, instead of the roller, particularly as I was researching for osteoporosis clients, putting the ball here at the base of the shoulders and then interlacing your fingers behind your head and extending over the ball mm -hmm. instead of the roller. It's just softer. Mm -hmm. And then you can take it a little further if you're, um, you want to minimize that, what, what they call that dowager's hump, which I don't want to get any more of. <laughs> and place the ball just below your neck but still support your head and neck. So you're getting that opening in the upper chest, right? And then, and just breathing here. And then the last thing that we just did was to move the ball just up, just at the base of the occiput to get some length in the neck and you don't have to keep your, he your hands there anymore. And that's it. Now we've done it twice, so we're good. Thank you. It's, it's not, it feels nice. I've been doing it a lot lately. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, welcome. In case you didn't catch, our theme of today's thoracic spine and swanning. That was the sort of the theme for this week. So if you guys want to have anything to share, I'm throwing it at you first, and then I'll pick up the tail end, I think. I have something to share, um, since we're already using the ball. Um, this is something that was inspired by um, Amy Havens. She's on Pilates Anytime. But um, just thinking about the ball again, and this time we're just going to be laying on our tummy. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, if you have like a little hand towel or something, maybe roll it up to put it under your head or, um, I don't know, like a t-shirt or something. I'm using like a half of a roll of uh, paper towel or something too. Um, so I'm going to get the ball and this one is, it's a mushy ball, right? It's not super inflated. Like, it's like we have our balls, right? And so I'm putting the ball right in between the breast tissue. Can you angle your camera down? We can't see you. Or oh yeah, sorry, see. thank you. I know, I need a, I need a director here. <laughs> I know, where's my tech crew? I know. Where's Tiziano when I need him? <laughs> okay, is that better? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so ball is about right here. And, you know, we might have to move the girls out of the way a little bit. Put our head down on the, like a t-shirt or just, just a little elevation because with the ball, you're going to be elevated. So it just helps to kind of um, get more comfortable. And then I'm just going to put my hands by my sides in my swan position. And already um, I feel uh, some extension in my upper thoracic. And, you know, I'm gonna put my pubic bone into the mat, engage my belly, legs are long. And then I'm going to push the ball forward just a little bit, getting some length in my spine. So I'm focusing here on length. And I'm, the backs of the hands are pulling back towards my feet. And then I'm coming back down, place my head down. And then I'm opening up the chest and getting length. So it depends here if you want to get length or you want to open up the chest more. But um, I think for with the ball in our older population, uh, getting length is important and getting opening. Okay, and then come down and then pushing the ball forward. 
and it just provides a nice support and it feels an um, opening in your chest. And I feel like it really helps, especially that people, if they go into their back normally, it helps them just feel what mm -hmm. it's supposed to feel like. Um, so they can maybe get used to that feeling first if they learn that way. So that's all I got. That's awesome. <laughs> that's great. Don't do that right after you've eaten. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> I'm I'm thinking about stuff. Give me a minute, and I'll come up with something. <laughs> okay. Our um, topic. So, the one thing I'm thinking of so far is the thread the needle stretch. Mm. Go ahead and show that now. Do you guys all know that? Does everybody know that? We'll show it the way that you're thinking of it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So because of my training, I'm like, I'm so, um, I'm such a, it's so important to me how people get set up before they begin something. So just getting into quadruped, right? And finding the hands under the shoulders, the knees under the hips, because people get into, as you know, all kinds of crazy, wacky positions. I also mm -hmm. like when they're in quadruped that they can come up onto their fists if they want to rather than being on flat hands because that can be I prefer it sometimes myself also as an option you can even um grasp weights and they're like little push-up handles so that people don't have to be palm down um and then I talked about this a couple weeks ago when we were talking about back but thinking here of having the back of the neck and the back of the head lifting up towards the sky or the ceiling so that the head isn't drooping down at all. And um, I would probably, this is sort of something that I would do with somebody toward the end of a session because it's such a stretch, but I don't even know how to describe this to you guys on the computer. So I'll I'm gonna take my right arm and turn my palm toward the ceiling and I'm going to slide my right hand through the space on my left side of my body. And as I do, I'm gonna bend my left arm and come down, down, down onto my right shoulder. Now, for me, personally, it's really hard to know where my hips are when I'm in this position. Like, mm -hmm. my hips, I think my hips have gone to the left, but I'm not even sure. So if you have a better sense for where your hips are, we're just gonna to try to keep the lower half of the body pretty stationary getting a strong stretch through the upper half of the spine. I like to stay here for about four to five breaths and then pushing up slowly. Coming back to center, getting the weight even from side to side through the knees and through the hands. So not just rushing through to the other side. Then we're gonna take the left hand, turn the palm toward the ceiling slide it through that hole, thread the needle with the left arm, bending the right elbow and coming down onto the left shoulder with the face facing right. And again, a lot, taking deep breaths here, even trying to feel the expansion of the rib cage in all directions, even in this pretty deep twist. So breathing fully into the lungs. And then pushing up with the right arm, coming back to all fours. I, when I do this myself, I do two or three repetitions on each side. So, any questions about any of that? No, can I just add on to that? Yeah. So mm -hmm. for some of us hyper flexi people, um, I take it just a little step further so starting exactly like Frida said, coming into that stretch over here. But for me, this isn't really, I'm not stretching yet. So what really helps me get there is to go up with this arm and even a little bit back if I can. Then I can really find that rotation in the rib cage and really open. And then I also get this open on the side. 
of the arm that I'm reaching up and over. So I just, it just takes it a step further, I think, into that. And then come back. Yeah, maybe try the other side. I feel very uneven. <laughs> it does really seem to make a difference where your hips are. Like if you're twisting to the right, if you angle your hips to the, sorry, if you're twisting to the left, angle your hips to the right, and there's like a lot more stretch, it feels like. <laughs> Oh, Allegra added her leg too. <laughs> I was thinking about it. it gets more stretch in that shoulder, but it's it's hard to balance. <laughs> Don't be scared, you guys. Be trying. <laughs> Okay, I'll try it. Oh. But we gotta keep that hips even on this this one special. Yeah. <laughs> nice. That's our yo that's our yogi there, Allegra. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have another one, Frida, too? Or? I, I'm just thinking about all kinds of stuff. My mind goes into a lot of postural work and shoulder stuff, too. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, so, okay. Um, I'll, I'll jump in for a minute while you guys think of more stuff. But I was going to, taking off of Allegra's um, chest on the ball idea, you could actually keep that there for more than just the swanning or do it without, but I'll take you back on your tummies. And then, so on what Frida was saying, one of my, there's a few things I've been working on. Uh, one is that shoulder blade connection to the upper back. Uh, and so there's two ways that I've really been working on that. One is I'm uh, having them go flat down with the arms overhead. Mm -hmm. So if they have a shoulder problem, this might not be the best way. The next one would be better. But if they don't, coming here with the arms overhead. Forehead can be down flat, but I actually prefer to float my head a little bit. So I press slightly into the floor enough that the back of my neck stretches and I get this kind of just floated head place where I'm not really efforting to keep it there, it just is. And then I will take my arms, slide the shoulder blades down my back while I have pressure on the floor. So I'm sliding them in and then releasing forward and sliding them in. And my trunk's going just uh, slightly up and down here, maybe an inch or so up and down, sliding the shoulder blades back and reaching forward and sliding back and reaching forward. And then really encouraging them to keep that pubic bone down and the belly lift, sliding down and letting that come in even more. So I'm, I'm gonna land in what I like to call my baby sphinx position. So my elbows can come down and I'm almost like I would pull myself forward on the mat, right? I have that pulling feeling, tailbones down, opening up the chest here. And that pull back towards me really helps me connect down mm -hmm. sides, um, down, and then really helps me pull the chest open with my head right on top so that I can really work on this upper extension in the thoracic region but without having to get into the lower back. So just holding this, I've had them just hold this. I've had them do, you know, leg kicks here. I've even had them stretch pulling and stretch the legs up a little bit and down just kind of a baby lift just to connect through the body but holding that position there and working the way down so i i really feel like that connects and gets my back active and also opens my chest at the same time and then from there i i really love and, and you guys all know this one two 
two ways to get to this W. So again, forehead could be just floating or it could be down or it could be like Allegra on something, little roll in front, whichever. Elbows are at that W and I'm just keeping my chest where it is and lifting the arms up so the shoulder blades squeeze mm -hmm. and back down. And I sort of over-exaggerate the squeeze here. It's not where I want them in posture. It's really just an activation and scapular motion. But then you could take that to a bit of a baby swan as well. And then down, relax. So opening, coming up and down and really trying to make that be in the upper back rather than in the neck. So the neck really doesn't lift at all. It just comes along for the ride, squeeze the shoulder blades up, down, and squeeze up and down. Yeah. So those are two of my favorites um, for that in, in the prone position. Do you guys have, have any thoughts or anything about that or to add? I, I was going to add the why, right? The, especially if you're tight in the shoulders. So the W and then the Y is really attainable for me to bring my hands down, turn the palms towards the floor to open up the shoulders, head floating or, or down, whatever you want. Lift the arms and the chest up and then back down. And that's it. Just I, I, I will sometimes have people do this a couple of times. Let the arms float up. Yeah, not your neck, Kim. Keep your neck lined up with your back. And one more time, arms up, chest up. And, and I, like, I like that feeling as well, at, or, and the W, but as well meaning two. Mm -hmm. And it, it feels a little easier for me to get those back muscles, especially at first because of how tight I am everywhere. Yeah, I like the reaching piece of that down that you yeah. can really put the fingertips towards the feet and that that sort of drives the body upward a little bit, the chest upward. Yeah. I really like that feeling. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, okay, I'll keep going until you guys interrupt me. <laughs> oh, I, I just want to add one thing. Um, and I was remembering um, that it's, well, it's to do, I mean, all of those, which you just showed, you know, those are great because we can, you can also flip them around and like do them well on the roller if it's not too hard, like the W, right? And then the opening up the chest too, um, which is great. But I'll just, one thing on the roller, can even do this. Just wanted to jump in because I have to um, leave a little early, but just you can be on your knees. You can't see me again. Or you can even be standing and um, just because sometimes I like I was trying this with the ring and it felt good, but um, I just feel like my shoulders are so tight or and just hyper flexible that sometimes I get out of my joint. It just really, it's just, I'm pressing on the sides of the roller and I'm just opening up a little bit, like opening out. And I guess you could also do this too with the ball in between your legs there to get some more stability to open the chest. And then I, help, I think it also helps to keep, well hopefully keep the arms in alignment and you can kind of see which arm maybe you're squeezing with more or not rolling back. So. Hmm. And then just, you know, the same cues like shoulder blades down the back, neck long, belly in. So that was just sort of a thought about <laughs> using the roller in a different way that I haven't seen. Uh, yeah, I would, I love it. I would add this too. I've been doing this on the floor. But yeah, you can roll up. Again, if somebody has a shoulder injury, maybe not so much because it's a lot of external rotation behind the body, but it's a really nice opener 
for the shoulders. So what I was going to add too is when we think about thoracic spine, you can't think of thoracic spine by itself, right? You have the cervical spine above it, which plays a big role in the posturing of the thoracic spine, or vice versa. You could say that the thoracic spine dictates a lot of the head posture. Both, both ways they affect each other, but the other really important structures to think about are scapula and scapular mobility, which leads to shoulders and shoulder mobility. So you rarely have a situation where somebody has excellent um, shoulder and thoracic uh, uh, one or the other. Like if the thoracic spine is not totally open, then the shoulder motion is restricted as well a lot of the times. And if there's a chronic shoulder restriction, the thoracic spine also tends to be forward, forwarding itself. So I think it's really key when you're thinking about how do I get somebody open in the thoracic spine is thinking about the whole, the whole picture. So where is the thoracic spine first? Sure. Can the are the shoulder blades mobile enough? Are the shoulders mobile enough? And what is it doing to my, the head, my head in posture? So then, you know, we open up this can of worms of how do you connect the shoulder blade? How do you mobilize and stabilize the shoulder blades? So I have another one with the roller that I really like. If you put it on the floor, this is actually probably taken from more TRX than it is from Pilates, but we use the pole planking series and that connection in Pilates. If you put the hands on the roller and keep the body, uh, most, I would say the weight kind of divided between hands and knees, both. Here, I want to keep stacked, so the hip, but I don't want to go behind. I want to stay in, in, in here forward on the hips. And then I will just allow the roller out as far as I feel like I can have it go without anything happening in my chest. So after Frida's beautiful setup here with everything aligned right, the head right, then letting that roller go away and then squeezing it back towards me while I keep my pelvis and hips really still. And you'll find that you can go not very far probably. And mm -hmm. if you find that you can get more, you can start higher up and start to go a little bit more, but keeping that control and the shoulder blade shrugging down. So it feels like for me, a really nice connection, much like the one I was doing laying on the tummy, shrugging the shoulders down. But then you could progress from here into more of a stretch. So I could go to here, find my point of like my last point that I can actually hold. And then I can release the tail, release the arms. And we're moving into sort of the, kind of like the cat on the Cadillac here. And then I can exhale, wrap my hips underneath me. So belly lift, hips wrap under. I'm going right up to the sky, pull it all back in here and find my neutral, right? So letting it all go out with control and choosing to then release and find that open. So I'm opening my chest towards the ground. So it, it Thumbs, I like to go up with my arms so that I'm not pinching my shoulders and then let my rib cage and chest try and drop towards the ground here. Enjoy that and then take a breath in, exhale and pull up through the body all the way up, hands coming back on, trying not to shift back when I'm pulling my way back up. All right, try that one more time. So really, so controlling with the arms, don't move anything, and then release, opening up the chest. And then exhaling, lifting it up. So straight up we go, shoulders down the back, find the top of that cat, and find your neutral again. Yeah? So that's one of my, I've been really enjoying that one with the shoulder blade control, then the stretch incorporated. Um, or one or the other, depending on what your target would be, you could just choose one or the other. Yeah. Any thoughts, questions, or keep going? That's, cool. a, that's a really, that's a hard one to, because staying in your hips over your knees and then 
going forward. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, really shows any uh, <laughs> can't cheat. Yeah, no. Mm -mm. Uh, good one one thing I kind of play with sometimes, uh, just piggybacking on that, is plank on the roller with the forearms on, and then doing that sort of rolling mm. in and out motion. That sounds hard. <laughs> so here, and then doing just, they're small, kind of in and out, working on the stability through that upper, yeah. Yeah, and then you kind of have to find the right spot for it to start to roll forward and back. But then I guess you could do this, you know, and quadruped also to start with working that kind of stretch into that and then pull pull back <clears throat> yeah nice So then I, um, I'll keep going, but please interrupt and stop and add whatever you want, whenever. If we're going into more advanced, uh, I've been really enjoying also working um, kind of, so the yoga versus Pilates, right? In Pilates, in yoga, you have downward dog and upward dog. In Pilates, you have elephant and you have snake, snake on the reformer, if you guys remember snake. We have it on the floor too, but uh, also on the reformer and I've been using that a lot as a sort of a continuous flow flowing motion so that we can connect the whole body into that upper and learn what to do with that upper body I don't know if my students really like it but I do, <laughs> so I do it often. <laughs> but I'll share it with you and um, so I have them start on all fours again pressing away so that and you know what, let me backtrack for a second. We've been doing, I've been doing a lot of quadruped work too. So here, as I have them set up, as Frida was saying, she's picky. I'm picky too, but I'm never sure if I'm getting across what I'm after. So I have them start here and I tell them, push that floor away. And much like what Frida was saying, if people aren't pushed away, their wrists get really congested in there. So having them go on their knuckles takes that away and actually puts them up a little bit higher through their shoulders. The other way I'm having them get there is to try and weight the knuckles of the hands across the metatarsals and the phalanges rather than in the base of the hand. So having the weight there. But then on top of that, push the floor away and then stretch one leg out and push the floor away again. Right. So here I have to push the floor away again. If I, Then I have them float the leg up push the floor away again. If I want to lift my opposite arm, I should be able to push that floor away enough that this arm feels like it's free. So there's no tension in this arm if I'm in the right shoulder positioning here, that shoulder upper body positioning. So I, I backtrack to this because I feel like without that positioning, so sliding away, press the floor away enough that Sam, I should still be square hopefully here, you could do it foot down or foot up, but push away enough that this arm is then free. That really teaches me where those shoulders need to be in my plank, right? So that's, this is a great step. And while that's not directly thoracic spine related, if we take this all up to our um, elephant for us, which is not fun if your hamstrings aren't stretched, <laughs> But elephant, you're wrapping the shoulders in, sinking the heels down, right? So I'm pulling the elbows towards each other, relaxing the neck, pressing back into those heels, letting my spine kind of stay more neutral in our elephant. We don't go into hyper like yoga does here. But then in the snake, you lift up on the toes. Sorry, I have to move my hands a bit. You wrap the glutes underneath you. You unroll yourself into that pressed out position. And then you can continue to open into this arched open thoracic place. So I'm squeezing in my lower half, belly and glutes, 
to open, wrapping the shoulders, pulling a little forward to open here. Legs are really strong. And then I have them tuck the chin, rolling up and through, hips going up to the sky. All right, so that could be version one. And then you could, um, if you like that and you want to use more of it, you can change it into arabesques too. So I could potentially take the one leg up, roll down, unroll, lift open chest, and then tuck in and reverse that upward again. Right, so on the other side, could be the same up, tucking forward, rolling through, pushing the floor away. Open the shoulders, chest, head, holding strong, and then tucking in and taking that leg up there. Yeah. So lots of room to progress, but all with that same connection and then with the thoracic opening at the end. So basically from foam roller to snakes. <laughs> Good. Yeah? It's just a little hard to do if your toes don't bend. That's all. Yeah, it is hard if your toes aren't bending, but you could probably do it from kneeling, from kneeling plank. You think? Not as well, but you could do it from quadruped to kneeling to open. Okay. Back and back. Right, tucking forward. Okay, that might work better for. And open. Tuck and back. Yeah. That works. That works, yeah. Yeah. And just be sure that when the head lifts, it's not just hinging, right? It's lengthening up. It's, it's about it unrolling from the chest, and that's where the head goes, rather than the head going and the shoulders trying to squeeze. It says unrolling from the chest. If the chest isn't opening, then the head's not lifting. Yeah. Yeah, that's the idea. Yeah, that works. That works pretty well, actually. It just mm -hmm. you've got to just keep it out of the mid lower back. But yeah. Yes. So really gluing in here in the belly and the glutes on the legs on strong. If you're straight legs, really strong through the knees as well. Yeah. So that your legs aren't giving out. Yeah. Um. Good. So then, any other ideas? Yeah. Bye. I like <laughs> Um, I mean, I just know. the you you know just the usual thoracic uh, over the roller. You yeah, know, tail at one end, head at the other. That's we all know that. And love. Yep. I um I don't know if this is actually a thing. Here, let me grab my therapy real quick. I, I was playing with this mainly because I'm teaching little kids ballet this week <laughs> oh. <laughs> we're talking about second position which is arms you know out to the side and a lot of times they have trouble figuring out where their shoulder like how they're you know they just kind of stick their arms out there <laughs> and um there's like not really knowing how much shoulder blade retraction to have versus expansion and so i was having them do this with a TheraBand, just taking it around the back. <clears throat> and you can kind of feel like, I don't know if this would be helpful for people who need a little uh, mobility back there too, but um, keeping the arms long, but then allowing the band to kind of pull your shoulder blades together. And then from there reaching out and feeling sort of that wrapping of the, uh, lats a little bit and the the um, serratus right. pulling the shoulder blades apart and kind of sending energy out the sides um taking the arms a little in front of the body of course as well um and that just kind of gives like kind of a nice feeling of like feedback of making some space back there in your back but also um 
you know, there's a little bit of work there. So it's just feedback for, for that length and that support, I think. I don't know how you guys feel about that. Good. Yeah, good. good. Yeah, I've been teaching serratus press this way, arms forward, I'll turn sideways, arms forward. I think we talked about this in another session maybe, but pushing serratus forward, but also pushing ribs back into the band Oops, as you go, and then releasing. So pushing forward and then letting the ribs expand, the back of the ribs expand a little bit and then coming back. So using the band behind as feedback to press, you did it, uh, Genevieve, you did it on all fours. Mm -hmm. feeling yeah. On all fours, that's where I thought we did as a group, but pr pressing the serratus and widening yeah. across on all fours, you could do that too. But that's the same, I think the same filling up the back body idea as, as support for that upper quadrant, I think is really great. And then I do that with my hug a tree too for our non ballet, like that same pressing in and widening and pressing back the rib cage to meet the band as well as in the band. And I like to tuck it. Yeah, just you guys did it right over the elbows a little bit just so I get that full feeling of round. And then I'm working to put the ribs back in the band there too. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Do you, Zaina or anyone else, have any tricks for getting um, feedback in terms of rib cage movement with deep breathing? The band made me think of this, like some way to help people get the, the full bucket handle breathing through the ribs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Go ahead, Genevieve. Um, yeah, I, I've done this before with people where I've had them take the band around and I try to get it nice and wide around the rib cage, um, especially the low ribs, um, low to mid, and then wrap it around and then kind of cue them to expand the band in all directions, but particularly to the back and sides. And so feeding in that way. Yeah. I don't know if you have other cues that you want to chime in. I don't. <laughs> I, this is good. This is a good start, I think. Yeah, I, I think it just gives that like, like you're working against something that you have that tactile feedback yeah but if anybody has any other ideas so I've used this too in sort of that upper ab idea I like to incorporate the breath when they're lying down because I feel like we get a lot more feedback here and so just starting with that feeling of hands on the rib cage can you feel your ribs expand kind of up and out as you breathe in? And then as you exhale, using the hands to come down and actually using the hands to help guide the, the direction, which is kind of this angle down, right? It's not straight sideways. It's this angle down towards the opposite hip, guiding that way. And then you can take the band keeping it wide, like Genevieve said. And I actually in, like to incorporate a little external rotation with the hands here because two things, it opens the shoulders, which is I think the side benefit and it helps the ribs go in the correct direction. So it feels like this diagonal, the diagonal lines pulling. So I would take it into kind of a breath, exhale, externally rotate as the ribs are dropping, the rib tips. Are dropping. I've gone to calling them the rib tips down the lower ribs, trying to get people to understand that that is actually also the whole rib tips coming down. And then I can come into that upper ab curl without lifting my head. It's just the trunk as I pull and then down. 
Great. So that takes it beyond just breathing and getting rib mobility, but that's, um, I think part of rib mobility is flexion extension. So that could be another piece for it if it was something that was allowed for that person to do. So I've been taking it there, rotating and rib chips dropping. Yeah. But yeah, I like the band as uh, something to breathe into, move into, create mobility of the rib cage, or give feedback, really. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, any other ideas, questions, thoughts? What Frida alluded to earlier, see, look, I just keep going if you don't stop me, so stop me if you want to. Mm -hmm. What Frida alluded to earlier was also sort of the the upper back, the rowing, and that we did some of this a while ago. Um, the question is always, how do you get it done when you are in a mat class, for example, and don't have uh, the right tools or the usual, I would say, tools? So I've really started working with people. I, my preference is getting them into different lunges to open up, so I can just take you through those, which I think we reviewed at one point, but kind of expand on that a little bit and show you if you think that'd be helpful. But yeah, the rowing back, straight arms, rowing back, bent arms, all of that helps open the front and strengthens the upper back in order to help you keep the front open, right? So that's why if, if the upper back isn't strong and or the front is tight, you're never gonna get that thoracic extension and mobility. So to, the two things have to happen, the stretching of the front and the strengthening of the back. So the stretching of the front, I think, you know, we foam roller, all those like cats on the roller, um, the ball here in the chest, all of that is mobility, which is great. So then how do we stabilize to strengthen for that would be kind of more the rowing stuff. So um, the one, there's that one here where you're just wrapping and pulling, which is nice and just a good reminder of where to be, maybe more posturally, but then more actively, Stretch or strengthening would be coming into um, and half kneeling is more stable for my older clients, but it's not as good, I don't feel, as being in lunge. So if you can lunge here, I like this best. And then we have a bunch of things we can do here. One is pulling the straight arms back and releasing here. Right, so we could do these, really wrapping, letting the back uh, activate and the chest lift. The other is the triceps here, which just makes you hold that position and really find the elbows digging down into the ground so that the chest stays open and the head stays up. And then wrapping the hands one more time, maybe deepening the lunge a bit. Take the trunk back and then elbows can pull, like pulling those elbows. So squeezing the shoulder blades, letting the chest open. And here I don't worry too much if they get a little bit of a rib flare. They're pretty locked in to the pelvis here, so they're not going to get a huge rib flare. And the goal is opening the back, so or strengthening the back and activating. So if there's a tiny rib flare that helps them get there, I'm not that concerned. And then I have them step through so that the band is on the back foot instead. And then from here, I have a little more extension. So here I'm already set up with the chest pretty far open and the shoulders wrapped on my back. And then I can try and do a little lifting here. Now again, shoulder injuries, this may be contraindicated. So you could go back to the other one. But here I could do a little shoulder extension, let the chest lift up as I go. Right, and the band is almost pulling me downward a little bit, which is good. And then again, I could do a little curl front, reach back, curl front, keeping the shoulder blades on here. Right. Yeah. So the bigger the lunge, the more you'll feel, but then that's going to depend on a lot of things, how big you want to make that lunge potentially. 
Yeah. Do you um, want to do the other side or are you good with just the one side? <laughs> you're good. I'm good. I got to jump off. Yeah. I think we all pretty, have, pretty much have to go, but yeah. hopefully that's somewhat helpful. Thank Absolutely. You. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys have a topic idea for next time? Anything you guys want to go over? Shoulder. Shoulder? Okay. Shoulder. Yeah, we can piggyback on to shoulder. Sure. I like that. Okay. Shoulder it is. All right.